Hello, what is up guys? Evil Duos Arm here, back with another Blade and Soul video. In today's video, we're going to be looking at my recommendations as to the top three classes a new player should consider playing when first getting into Blade and Soul. Now, every single class in the game is completely viable, every single class in the game is pretty fun, but when you're first starting out as a new player, you're going to want to pick something that's going to give you the most benefit for the least effort put in. Basically, since you're new, you're not going to have as many resources as someone who's been playing for a while, so you're going to find it a bit more difficult to get going. Basically, it's going to be a bit harder to get to parties, it's going to be a bit harder to do damage, and basically a bit harder to generally play the game. So we want to make our first character as beneficial to us and make the play experience as easy as possible with regards to finding parties, with regards to doing solo content, with regards to getting through story and killing enemies. Basically, make the game as fun as possible as quickly as possible. So the three classes I've picked out are all incredibly useful in teams, they're all incredibly efficient at clearing solo content, and they all will provide you with a solid play experience when starting. You can pick any class when playing Blade and Soul, they're all viable, they're all great fun, but these three are going to put you in a good position. If you think I missed one, in the comment section go ahead and leave your opinions below as to what you think is the best class for a new player. And if you are new to Blade and Soul, please consider subscribing to the channel as it does mean a lot to me and you'll find a lot of great use from all the different Blade and Soul videos on the channel. So we're going to break this video down into the three different typical MMO class rankings sort of. So we're going to have the DPS class, if you want to be a DPS character in Blade and Soul, if you love doing the most damage on a scoreboard, then we're going to pick your class for you. If you like being the tank and keeping aggro on a boss and controlling the tempo of the fight, we'll have a tank character picked out for you. And if you enjoy supporting your team or being useful for the party, we're going to have the support class picked as well. So the first class we're going to look at is the DPS oriented gunslinger class. So this is my gunslinger, he is Evil Duas Harm, if you see him in game feel free to say hi. But the reason we're recommending the gunslinger as a DPS character to a new player is because of how easy it is to get his damage scaling so quickly. Basically, you're going to be doing an insane amount of damage very early on with just a few items. That damage is so great that you'll find yourself doing comparable damage to people that have been playing the game for months, if not years, simply within your first few weeks of playing the game because of how quickly your various skills scale. The main skill on the Gunslinger that scales so hard is your Tombstone skill in the Fire build. So if we press K to go into the Destruction build, the Fire build, you will see an option for this Reaper, Executioner, or Gravedigger. This is your Tombstone skill, and it does insane burst damage. This insane burst damage is enough to carry you to the top of the DPS board early on in fights, and since a lot of fights in Blade and Soul don't last very long, you'll find yourself placing a lot higher on the DPS meter than people that have a lot better builds than you. This is awesome for a new player because you'll be contributing instantly to a team with your damage. The other thing that the Gunslinger brings to the party is going to be your Alpha Call skill. Your Alpha Call skill is located on the Z key, and this skill resets all buffs for the party. This is useful because just about every single party will want a Gunslinger, since they can run their double buff and then Alpha Call to reset the buffs and then double buff again. This increases your party's damage tremendously and is a really great skill to have. A lot of parties will be looking for this. In addition to all of this, the Gunslinger brings superior mobility to any other class in the game. You can jump, you can glide, you can fly, you can move all over the map any which way you want. You can hook over here. Want to go up? Go up! Over here, back down. You've got so much mobility in the Gunslinger, it's really insane. You shouldn't be getting hit with a Gunslinger simply because of how much you can jump around. So great mobility combined with great damage combined with great survivability makes us an amazing class. So on top of insane damage and insane mobility, the Destruction Gunslinger also has one of the easiest rotations in the game, super easy for a new player to learn. In fact, as a new player, you can just use Simple Mode, which is Shift F3 on the keyboard, and it will do your entire rotation for you. All you need to do is throw in a V, a 4, and a Tab every minute or so to maximize your damage. Really, really easy for a new player to pick up. So what I'm going to do is jump into a little clip of me playing as the Gunslinger on a final boss that shows you the real capability of the Gunslinger and moving around and dodging skills and being useful to a party. So we're going to cut to that right now. So this is the final boss of Hollow's Heart, the Tree Man, and what you're going to notice from the Gunslinger right off the bat is the huge amount of upfront damage. You can see I bursted for 700,000 within the first like 5 seconds of this entire fight. Huge amount of damage to be contributing to the team. Now my damage is going to fall off throughout the remainder of the fight, but that 500,000 is still going to carry me for a solid amount of time. And as you can see, the boss is already halfway dead, so that burst damage was a huge bonus right there. Now what we're going to see in the next portion is the Gunslinger's mobility. So I was able to move off of that hook, where that root that had me locked in right there. 
I get pulled away, I can F roll, and then I see the rings coming, so I can E out of the way. I still have four more of those that I can cast. You can see the little blue icons there. So I have a lot of mobility left in my character, and the boss fight's still almost over, and I still have all that mobility available. So here you need to go to those flowers for the mechanic, and I was able to beat the boss's mechanic on that side, get back over to this side with my hooks, and be able to save the party once again. So the mobility is immense on the Gunslinger, and then I'm still maintaining a solid amount of damage while doing all of this. And this final bit right here, you see I have an iframe for 5 seconds that protects me. You saw two of my teammates pretty much die. One did die, one almost died. And I was able to sit there unscathed because of the mobility and survivability of the Gunslinger. So super useful, super easy class for a new player, and super beneficial for your overall play experience. So the next class we're going to look at is going to be the Warden, and the Warden is your option, your only option if you are a tank main from any other game, this is the class you're going to want to play. The Warden features the best block in the game, the best buff in the game, and the best survivability in the entire game, all wrapped up into one package. It's almost unfair that all of these things are put on the same class, and really makes for an amazing tank and party useful player. So starting off with your tanking abilities, the Warden is the only character in the game that has two health bars. You have this Resilience bar, and then you have your normal health bar. This is because some of the Warden skills drain your health bar instead of draining your energy bar, so they have the second health bar to kind of buffer you for that. But a good Warden can keep your health bar and this Resilience bar full at all times, basically taking no damage. In addition to this, you have a skill, your V, Blade Ward, that makes you immune to CCs while you're attacking. This basically means as long as you're fighting the boss, you're immune to CC, and when you get enough items and gear and progress further in the game, that skill is always up, so basically you'd never get CC'd. It's amazing. On top of this, you have the Soul Flare buff, which is the best buff in the game. It unlocks a secret skill for every single class that does stupid amounts of damage and makes your character incredibly strong. On top of all of this, you have the best block in the game that lasts for 5 seconds, and you can just stand there and block and do nothing, because why play the game? So there's so many different tanking capabilities on this class that make it immense. As far as party usefulness goes, that Soul Flare buff is going to get you into any party in the game. There's only two classes that can do with the Soul Flare buff. You've got the Warlock that does Soul Burn, and then you have the Warden that does Soul Flare. So both of those classes have that same buff, it's the Soul buff. It increases your team's DPS. So every party wants one or the other. On top of that, every single party needs a tank. And the Warden is the best tank in the game, so combine the best buff with the best tank, and you have a great class. In addition to this, it's a fairly simple class to learn. Simple mode rotation, Shift F3 for a new player, is going to give you the majority of your damage skills. You're still going to need to throw a few skills in there left and right, you know, when you're playing through the fights or reacting to different boss mechanics, but for the most part, your main damage rotation is handled by the simple mode. Obviously, as you progress and learn your rotation a bit better and unlock different badges, you're going to want to change your rotations a little bit. So you're going to want to move away from simple mode, but as a new player just starting out, you can learn the class very easily and get a good grip on it simply by holding down right mouse button while you learn the other mechanics of the game. So I do have a video of me running in cold storage on this character. It's not going to provide you with very much video demonstration of this class other than the fact that you're going to see that I like never get knocked down or never take any damage simply because I have all of those health bars active and all of those buffs active that are making me immune to just about everything while I'm fighting it. It's really an amazing class for those tank-minded people. So anyway, let's cut to the clip. So I decided to skip the clip a bit ahead. I cut off the first, like, three quarters of the fight and only did the final quarter just for time's sake because nothing really changes between the entirety of this fight. It's kind of boring. You kind of just sit there, take no damage, and can continue walking forward and laying down the punishment on the boss. So the big circle you see on the ground that actually just faded away now as I say it is your Blade Ward skill. As long as you're standing inside of that circle, you take no CCs or you will not be knocked down, knocked away, dazed, any of those. You'll be perfectly fine. You can see I had about like four seconds of downtime where that I could have actually been hit and then I have it back up. So right here you see attacks coming through, my resilience bar is eating the damage, my health bar immediately recovers because I have so much lifesteal on the character. He's really just impossible to kill. This also all carries over into PvP as well. You can become immune to attacks, immune to crowd controls, and things like that. So really, it's a super, super strong character. So here at the end of the fight, you're going to see a lot of people taking a lot of damage, and you're going to notice my health bar, I'm number four on the meters over there on the left, just doesn't move. It's always being held up, it's always being recovered. Like right there, boom, everybody's is still dropping, but you see mine is staying up. You know, it's really, really hard to put this character down. So if that's your playstyle, if you like tanking, if you don't like dying, this is the class for you. So the final class we're going to look at today is going to be the Summoner, and the Summoner is the ultimate support for you support mains out there. 
This class literally has it all. Party protects, healing, revives, everything you could possibly want in a support all wrapped up into one small little package, literally really small, since the only race you can be as a support is the Lin race. So the summoner features two sort of skill bars. One is dedicated to controlling your cat, the other is dedicated to controlling your summoner. This gets a bit of micromanaging in the game, but that's pretty easy still for a new player to manage as the skills are pretty basic. As far as ping requirements go for this class, very minimal ping requirements at all, if any. You don't really have to worry too much about ping while playing as the summoner, which is great. Additionally, it's a ranged class, so it's more forgiving on your FPS meter as well. You'll be farther away from the boss, you'll have more time to react, so your ping and FPS won't impact you very much when compared to a melee class like the Warden. So, I do want to apologize, there's not a dungeon run or anything for me to show you how the class handles in-game. If you are looking for up-to-date gameplay on the Summoner, I highly recommend checking out Kuropi's channel. He plays the Summoner, he mains the Summoner, he's got a lot of videos of him playing the Summoner. So if you want to see how the class plays, check out his videos. But the Summoner itself brings so much utility to the party, and we're going to go over its skills right now. So I'm going to open up the Martial Tome by pressing the K key on the keyboard. So if we look at all the different skills that the Summoner has, that as far as like support maining goes, you have a bunch to choose from. So as far as party reviving and party management skills go, you have an entire party revive as well as a single target revive. So for the entire party revive to work, your entire party needs to be dead, including yourself or a large portion of your party, including yourself. And what you do is you sacrifice your cat, so long as your cat is still alive but you've died, your cat explodes and your entire party comes back to life. Really as simple as that. It's an awesome skill, especially during raids, where if like the entire party on one team just completely died and the other party's still fighting the boss, you can bring your whole party back by blowing up your cat. Pretty cool skill. The other skill as far as revives go is helping paw. It's your left mouse button on a dead ally. Basically your cat will sit there and revive the ally instead of you having to revive the ally. This is useful because you can continue to fight with your summoner character. Additionally, there's some bosses where it's impossible to revive a player. You'll be knocked out of the revive animation. Your cat is not knocked out of a revive animation when he gets hit by CCs or anything like that. He'll continue to revive the ally as long as the cat doesn't die. So super useful with that little mechanic there. Now as far as healing goes for your party, you have a spammable heal on your Z key. The spammable heal recovers a large portion of your ally's health over the duration of the spell, and then when it's expired you can pretty much cast it again to continue regenerating your teammate's health. Super useful for keeping everybody's health topped off in a party. Now in addition to the heals and party revives, you also have a party protect. You can protect your entire party with a 4 key through several attacks of an enemy by making the whole party go into stealth. When in stealth, your team gets increased evasion stat naturally. Additionally, the initial casting into stealth where your whole party goes into stealth will give them an immunity to whatever attack was being cast at them to make them have to go immune, if that makes sense. Basically, it negates a boss's attack and puts everybody into stealth, which also further reduces the chance of them being hit. Super useful skill as well for raids, there's a lot of area wide attacks that a boss will use on your entire team, and being able to negate that attack entirely is unique to the summoner and assassin, in this manner anyway, and the summoner brings so much more utility to the team as far as healing and revives go, that it definitely takes the cake as the best support for a new player to pick. Like I said, it's very easy to understand, very easy to learn, very low requirements as far as PC and ping requirements, so really a great character for someone to start as. And I guess just to show you what it sort of looks like, there's two different specs, and they both are pretty much the same, so I'll just show you the one. You're basically going to be playing like a third-person shooter, similar to the Gunslinger that we looked at earlier. But in addition to this, you can also control your little cat, so if you wanted to do a knockdown, you send your cat to knock down. You can hammer him to daze, and then you've got your heals and all sorts of different skills like that. So that bottom bar controls the cat, in addition to your main skills that will control uh, your summoner skills. So anyway guys, that is basically it for this video. I hope it gives you an idea of what class you should be picking as a new player, or if you're trying to decide on an alt class maybe. If you did like this video, make sure I know by leaving a like. Also, if you think I missed a class, or if you think one's better, leave a comment in the comment section below so I know what your thoughts are. As always guys, thank you so much for watching. I will see you at the next video. Peace.